Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. The race, we are told, is to the swift. Likewise, the battle to the strong. There is no substitute for victory. Winning. That's the only thing. The only place is first place. The only guy is top guy. The only number is numero uno. As a popular philosopher so recently stated, nice guys finish last. True, perhaps, but there are also some last guys who finish nice. Or should we say, nicely. Our mystery drama, The Secret Chamber, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Ian Martin. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and True Value Hardware Stores. I'll be back shortly with Act One. There are those people who flatly refuse to recognize the existence of ghosts. But, as Mark Twain once said, those are the people who never saw one or heard one. There is something about the sight of a ghost, the sound of a ghost on a dark night in a deserted house that will dissolve the doubts of the most skeptical and make fervent converts of the most cynical. After all, seeing is believing, isn't it? Well, why don't we discuss this matter with a man who's more or less an authority on the subject? Tattersall's the name. Thomas Tatum Tattersall. Oh, just plain Tommy suits me fine. Been a real estate agent all my life, though. Nowadays, we have a fancy name for it, Realtor. So, you say you're in the market for fine old colonial, huh? Take back to the revolutionary period. Well, I got just the thing, a real beauty, the Hargraves house. Oh, you know about that one, huh? You hear it's haunted. <laughs> Would I sell you a haunted house? Well, the uh, fact of the matter is it used to be haunted, but no more. Can I uh, guarantee that? Well, I suppose I just tell you the story. No extra charge, and you can decide for yourself, huh? <laughs> is that fair enough? <laughs> well, now, you, uh, you got to go back a ways to the war. Well, I guess you'd call it the First World War. I didn't get to go myself. I was just a shade too young. I was also just a shade too young for, for a beautiful girl named Felicity Hargraves. Anyhow, she was in love with uh, Lieutenant Bobby Lightfoot, who was fighting in France with the Rainbow Division. Well, one morning, Felicity's mother asked me to drop over to the house. Thomas, you have to help me. Oh, how, Miss Hargraves? Bobby... Bobby Lightfoot is dead. Bobby Lightfoot? Yes, but he just Felicity was notified. Bobby fell at a place called Chateau Tilly. Oh, gee, I, I... I feel so bad for Felicity. Yes, Felicity. Thomas, I'm frightened. You see, when Felicity found out she was standing right here in this room, she didn't say one word. Not a solitary tear ran down her cheek. She stood silent for at least five full minutes. And then she turned around and went upstairs to her room. And and she said nothing at all? That was three days ago. She still won't say one word. She won't touch a bite of food. Nor sip a single swallow of water. Oh, oh, what do you suppose I could do? Oh, I'm at my wit's end. Oh, if only her father, the judge, was alive. And her Uncle Dumont's off in the Navy. Thomas, could you talk to her? Oh, Miss Hargis, what could I say to her? She was always fond of you, Thomas. Oh, yes, ma'am, but... She cannot keep sitting in that room forever. What am I going to do? Ma'am, I sure wish I knew. Oh, if you'd been a little older, perhaps she might have fallen in love with you instead of Bobby Lightfoot. That's why you've got to help her. Well, I'm willing to help, ma'am, but I, I just don't know how. Just talk to her. Talk to her. That might be enough. Talk to her. Felicity? Uh, it's me, Tommy. Tommy Tattersall? Felicity? Yes. I know. Tommy. 
Nancy, I... I'm sorry about Bobby. Bobby? Who? Who's Bobby? Bobby Lightfoot. I don't know anyone named Bobby. Oh. Well, um, uh, w- would you like to go for a walk? No, Tom. Oh, but you've been cooped up in your room so long. Be... I want to stay here. It's such a lovely room, isn't it? Well, yes, but... The house is such a magnificent house. I was born here. Did you know that? Uh, oh, yeah. I was my dad and his dad before him. I never want to leave this house. Felicity, why not? Because there's death outside. Death? Death. Lying in wait everywhere. Death. (gasps) Now I remember. My own Bobby Lightfoot. Didn't I plead with him? Don't go, Bobby. Don't leave. Death is waiting there outside. But he didn't listen. My Bobby didn't listen. But I won't leave this house. I won't go out there. Out where death is waiting. Oh, now, look, Felicity, I, 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 could, could I tell I'm you something? safe here. These rooms, these walls, these floors and ceilings, they all know me. They all love me. Look, look through the windows. Look out on the street and see how bright and how clear and how lovely everything this is. This house, this shelter, and protect me. I'll never and just leave. Just the street, you see my dad's office, you see? I don't want to look out on the street. Look, start I'm tomorrow. I, I go to work there. Why don't you come by early in the day and just, just uh, you know, say hello uh, to uh, me? I, I, no, I, uh, uh, you can trust me, Felicity. I wouldn't let anything bad happen to you. Just Say hello to me at the office tomorrow. Take a take a walk over. Well, it'll have to be a very short walk. I'm so afraid to be outside. There's so much death. And that's how it all began. Every morning she'd come by, say hello, and then she'd rush right back home. Poor Felicity. I was the only one she ever talked to. And what did we talk about? Good morning, Tommy. Morning, Felicity. How do you feel this morning? I... I don't feel well. I did a terrible thing. Oh, not you, Felicity. Yes, I, I, I did. I... I stepped on an ant... I saw him. Him? I I should have waited till he'd gone by, and I did stop. But then so did he, and I thought he was just going to stay there, and it would be safe for me to... And then I... I, Just as I stepped forward, so did he, and and, and my my foot... (laughs) It was too late. I'm sorry, Felicity. I'm, I'm... I'm really, truly sorry. An aunt is a living thing. It's one of God's creatures. It wasn't your fault. Part of God's oh, plan. So that he won't be held against you. You mean that, Tommy? Of course, honey. You're not just saying it to make me feel better. Would I lie to you? And I, I'll, I'll be forgiven someday. Oh, uh, you've been forgiven already. <laughs> Felicity Hargraves, once the loveliest, liveliest young lady in the county. And as time went on, she got no better. I guess you could say she got even worse. So the years went by. She was so tall, so beautiful, and I was so much in love with her. But nothing could ever come of that. So anyway, one, one night I got a call from Mrs. Hawkins, and seeing her was a shock. I mean, she'd been such a sturdy, well-built, strong woman, Felicity's mother. And here now, all of a sudden, it was, it was like as if she'd shrunk to almost nothing. Uh, Tommy. Oh, Mrs. Hargraves. Yes. Oh, oh, you don't know what to make of me. I can't understand it myself. It happened almost overnight. But what's wrong? I... I am dying. And Felicity is going to need a friend more than ever. Well, she's always got a friend in me. Her uncle, Dumont, will take care of her financial affairs. Dumont? Yes. The judge 
have him named executor of the estate when I die. Oh. I I know he'll pay her bills and see that she always has this house. But, Tommy, he won't have time for her. Felicity will need someone to talk to. Someone who will worry about her. Promise me, Tommy. Promise. Less than a month later, that fine lady was dead. And Dumont Hargraves took active charge of the family money. <laughs> Maybe what happens next is a story you might have heard before. Why not? Don't it occur all the time? There was all kinds of talk in town that Dumont was running through all the assets, that he was making unwise investments, that he was gambling and, of course, losing heavy. Well, none of this could be proved. But one day, Dumont came into the office. Morning, Tommy. I'd like to throw a little bit of business your way. Oh, yes? Oh, that yes. You ever see a bird look at a snake? Well, Dumont, watching you, I now see how a snake looks at a bird. You don't like me, Tommy. That's true. You think I'm robbing Felicity of her inheritance? Well, you are, aren't you? Well, it looks that way, I admit. Tommy, it's not my fault. Yeah? <laughs> so what's this business you want to throw my way? First, I wanted you to understand that I didn't ask for the job of executive. All right, Dumont, get to it. Well, I, uh... I, I had to sell the house. The house? The old Hargraves homestead. But you can't sell the house. Why not? Well, because Felicity... Well, what about Felicity? Well, where, where will she live? Where? Where she belongs. In the sanitarium. How can you say that? Well, it's true. How can she live all by herself in that big old house? She manages very nicely. Tom, I'm her uncle. I love her. I want to do what's best for her. Felicity simply is not right in the head. Dumont, don't you say that. Oh, poor Tom. You had a crush on her all your life. And then when Bobby Lightfoot got killed, you might have had a chance, but she went crazy. I tell you, don't use that word. Can you suggest another one that describes the situation more accurately? Look, Dumont, the, 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 the house, it, it, it means so much to her. It's all she has in the world. It's all I have in the world, too. What do you mean? There's nothing left but the house. Nothing left? How can that be? Oh, I don't know, Tommy. Here and there, this and that. It all adds up to... to nothing. Dumont, I won't let you sell that house. I'll go to court. I'll have you declared unfit to continue as executive. Sure. And you'd probably even win. But it's too late. Everything else is gone. The court would have to sell the house in any event to satisfy the debts. I'm sorry, Tommy. Somebody has to tell her. Tell her what? That she has to leave the house. Oh, sure. That's right. Somebody does. Somebody has to break her heart, destroy her spirit, and turn her whole world into ashes and ruins, and you know who that somebody is going to be, Dumont? You, Tommy, you... Oh, no, this is all you're doing. You're going to tell her. Justice demands it. But if I tell her, it'll kill her. But, but if you tell her, well, you can put it in such a way that... She'll believe you. She'll actually think it's all for the best. There are those people who are always pulling chestnuts out of the fire. Somebody else's chestnuts, we might add. Why do they do it? What makes the Tommy Tattersalls of this world tick? Since there's a little bit of Tommy in so many of us, perhaps even in you... Why not ponder the problem for a few moments until I return shortly with Act Two? Someone said once that a house is not necessarily a home. That may not be true, but what can hardly be in dispute is the fact that a home has to be a house of some kind, anyhow. It has to have form and structure. It must protect and shelter. It must be fortress and sanctuary. 
Felicity Hargraves is about to be evicted. But I, I can't leave here, Tommy. I can't. I know it's difficult, Felicity. Oh, it's much more than difficult, Tom. It's impossible. Look, Felicity, just... Listen. I'll die. N- no. Oh, you... yes. There's death outside. You know that. I'm not safe anywhere else, Tommy. You'll be safe with me, Felicity. I spoke it over with my mother. You'll stay at our house for a while. No, I want to stay at my house. Well, mother's alone all day, and you'll, you'll be such good company for each other. You always liked my mother, didn't you? Yes, Tommy, very much. I have a wonderful idea. Let her come and stay with me at my house. But Felicity, she... Please, won't you try to understand? Understand what? That it isn't your house anymore. How can it not be my house? It's got to be sold. It's part of me. According to the law... Every part of this house is a part of me, Tommy. It knows me. It sheltered me. It kept me warm. It kept me dry. It kept me safe. No, I, no, I Tommy. Know what I, I'm no, only no, to... Could I sell part of myself? Could I sell my heart? But... Could I, Tommy? Yes, I could. But I'd die. Felicity, I only want to help you. Now, now you know that, and you believe me. Soon the you? war in France will be over, and Bobby will be back. And if I'm not here, he won't know where to look for me. Well, I, I'll, I'll keep an eye out for Bobby, and, and if he comes along, I'll... Oh, no, I'll... don't say if. When? Well, when he comes, I'll bring him to you. Come on, now, Felicity, you... You come with me. Now? It'd be best. Tommy, please, let me just stay here one more night, please. Let me stay here tonight and and say goodbye to the house. And then in the morning, I'll go away with you, please. All right, Felicity. I'll come by for you. Early in the morning. Maybe I shouldn't let her stay, but how could I refuse her? Besides, what could happen? Well, a great deal happened. I came by for her in the morning, and she was gone. Felicity! Felicity? Where are you? Felicity! Sheriff, it's uh, uh, Tommy Tattersall. Yeah, it's Felicity Hargrave. She's gone. Yes, sir, that's what I mean. She's disappeared. Oh, well, I, I'm here now. Yeah, I searched the house from top to bottom. There's not a sign of her. I don't know where she went. Where could she go? Where could she go? Well, there was all kinds of talk. Foul play. Or maybe she might have just wandered off into the woods and beyond them down into the swamp. If she'd gone and done that, then she'd be lost forever. Well, that's what I told people. Because I realized what Felicity had been trying to tell me. That if she had to leave that house, she'd kill herself. That's what all the talk about death and the monitor to. And I felt it was my fault. Why had I let her stay that final night? Why had I left her alone? Well, as you might imagine, the disappearance of Felicity Hargraves was a sensation. But like all such sensations, it only lasted a while. We had the elections and the circus come to town and one thing and another. And gradually, Felicity Hargraves was forgotten by almost everyone. Except me. Tell me. You've got to help me out. Yeah, that's where I'd like to help you, Dumont. Right out the door. Now, don't be angry, Tommy. It goes against your better nature. I'm in trouble. Well, I'm glad to hear it. No, you're not. You're a very kind-hearted person. I still have to sell that house. I'm not stopping. Don't you hear what's being said around town? The house is haunted. It's impossible for a house to be haunted. Oh, I don't know about that. The way it started was I advertised in the Philadelphia and New York papers. Now, I admit I was trying to save your broker's commission. I admit that. Well, these folks came down, and I took them into the house, and they just loved it. I almost had a deal. And then we heard it. Heard what? The ghost. What do you mean, ghost? How could you hear it? Oh, was moaning and crying. Dumont, it's impossible. There were three of us. This man, his wife, and myself. All three of us, we heard it. I still say it's impossible. Instead of standing there and saying, impossible... Why don't you go in here for yourself? 
All right, Dumont. Where's your ghost? I tell you, we heard it. I tell you what you heard. You heard the voice of your guilty conscience. You robbed a troubled girl out of everything she owned in this world. Believe me, Tommy, it wasn't intentional. Well, it comes to the same thing. Money meant nothing to her, but then you took away the one thing she couldn't live without, this house. Oh, please, Tommy. Now go ahead and suffer because you deserve it. Tommy, my conscience is one thing, but a ghost is something else. There is a ghost. It's the ghost of Felicity Hargraves. Felicity's dead. She... <laughs> Listen, what? Listen, Tommy. What? Oh, good Lord. Do you hear it? Do you hear it? You hear that, Tommy? It's not your imagination. It's not the terror on my face. Close your eyes. Don't you hear it? Oh. There. Tommy, there. Is it my imagination? It was a ghost. It was just the way a ghostly voice was supposed to sound. So I'd been wrong all my life. There was such a thing as a ghost. And this was the ghost of Felicity Hargrave. She'd come home. I believed. Do something, Tommy. Do something. Do what? Tell her to stop. How can I tell her? I, she, she always liked you, Tommy. That's a fact. No, 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 no. Explain to her. Aren't you crazy? Please, I Tommy. I have to sell this house. All right, all right. Felicity? It's me. Tommy. Felicity. Are you here? Did you hear that? It's here. Stop doing it. Felicity. You shouldn't be here. You only scare folks. Felicity, I, uh, I, uh, oh, will you forget it, Dumont? It's Felicity's house. It's Felicity's it's her house, dead or alive. And if she wants to live in it, I say more power to her. It was no longer the Hargrave's house. It had now become the haunted house. No one would go near it. Well, one day, Dumont came into the office, and with him was a woman, a tall woman with a sharp and bony face and long, jet-black hair. And she wore a dress that was also black, but the blackest black you could imagine. You know, she was the kind of woman you'd meet in a, in a nightmare. It was broad daylight, and we were in my office. And still and all, this woman sent a chill... Up and down my spine. Uh, Tommy, may I present the Countess de Gennaro? Uh, how do you do, ma'am? Charmed. The, uh, Countess is an exorcist. A what? An exorcist. I am the one who banishes the evil spirit. Uh, look, what kind of joke is this, Dumont? Oh. Tom, this lady is a great artist. What is she here for? I am to exorcise the evil spirit from the house of Hargrave. Now, ma'am, there's no evil spirit in the house of Hargrave's. There is a spirit. You have heard the spirit. Now, that's Dumont. You just get taken in by his mumbo-jumbo. Tommy, I'm desperate. Mumbo-jumbo? No more. Now, 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 what you've done, you've irritated her. You do not believe in spirits? Well, I, I... She I... must return to the grave. She will never know peace. That's right, Tommy. We're doing this for her own good. Well, what do you want with me? Somebody has got to go into the house with Countess de Gennaro. All right, that's you, Dumont. Oh, uh, no, no, no. I, I, I would create a, a spiritual climate of violence... Which the countess couldn't overcome. Sure, and you're also scared out of your wits to walk into that house. Oh, that's a secondary consideration. Why does somebody have to go into the house with a countess? A witness is required by astral law. All right, folks, go ahead. Find yourself a witness. I, uh, I respectfully decline the honor. Tommy. Tommy, you've got to do it. Everyone else in town turned me down. Now do it for Felicity. Felicity? Yes, let her spirit find peace. She can't keep wandering around that house forever. Do you want to be guilty of depriving Felicity of her rest and peace throughout all eternity? Yeah, but this exorcist business... Business? Business? He dares to call it business. It is a sacred profession. It's a fake. Is it? And do you know everything, young man? Can you swear that Felicity's ghost isn't in the house? Oh, come on, Tom. What?
What have he got to lose? Oh, he has a great deal to lose. His arrogance. His intolerance. His ignorance. All right. All right, I'll go. I'll go. And here he goes again. Poor Tom. As you have already seen, he does get to run a great many errands for people. But this one coming up looks like an authentic first. Join us for dinner this evening, Tommy? No, thanks. I have work to do. What kind of work? Exorcising a ghost. <laughs> How's that for a conversation piece? Well, our exercise in exorcism is scheduled for Act Two, which is only a few moments away. <laughs> Exorcising spirits is a practice that's as old as mankind. However, in practically all recorded cases, the spirits were evil and therefore deserved to be driven out. We have a slightly different problem here. We have a spirit that's kind and gentle, the ghost of a beautiful lady. But evidently that won't help her. Since she's a ghost, out she must go. All right, Madame Desjardins. When do we go to the house and start your little con game? Mr. Hargraves, I simply cannot tolerate the attacks of this, this, this boorish, ignorant, light. Now, Tommy, in the first place, she's a countess. In the second, it's an ancient and honorable profession. Yes, but since I'm to be a partner in this deal, all I want to know is when it starts. When the moon has risen and Venus has approached perihelion. All right, just give me the time. At the stroke of midnight... You and I shall stand in the geocentric ordained perimeter of the presence, and the ritual shall begin. Well, I tell you, it was easy enough to laugh at this dame. But the more she got herself involved in what she was doing, the more she started to... Oh, to kind of scare you. Her black eyes began to send out sparks. She could feel fire in her voice. And before you knew it, she kind of began to believe it wasn't an act. But that there was something dark and mysterious and, and scary about it. She closed her eyes and pressed her hands against her head as if her mind was on, on fire, trying to burn through her skull. Out! Out! I command you! Out! Go! Go! Sever the bones. Cut, crack, break. Go! Spirit, you who in life were Felicity Hargrave, I command you to leave. Within me is the soul of the high priest of the temple. I will now exorcise you. Leave. Go. Or I shall pronounce the ineffable, forbidden tetragrammaton. I shall thunder under the name of... What's wrong? She fainted. I, I somehow managed to get her outside. There was a rickety old rocking chair on the porch, and I sat her down on it. And I waited for her to come to. When she woke up, finally, it was obvious that a, a profound change had taken place within her. Uh, uh, what hit me? I beg your pardon? The slicker, huh, Slick? The flim flam are out flim flam. <laughs> oh, you were right about me, pal. Back there in the office when you called it a con game. That's all it was, a racket. But go figure. There were ghosts. What are you saying? I'm saying, pal, that you just heard the real article. You heard a ghost. You know there's no such thing as a ghost. There ain't. What do you think's inside the house here? Now, look, Countess, did you know? All right, stand that Countess label, pal. 
The square handle's Molly McGuire from Union City, New Jersey. This ghost racket now, it, it's a gimmick. A hook to cast the rubes with. But you know something? I see now the rubes were right. Maybe the rubes were always right. Because there are ghosts. <laughs> and the last on the flickers. Like me. And so the time went by. And the house became more haunted than ever. And then one day, Duwant came in. Oh, he was considerably older now, and he looked the worse for wear, or uh, I should say, the worse for work. Because these days, he had to earn a living. But in many respects, he was still the same old Duwant. Tommy, Tommy, you, you've got to help me. I've got a chance. A one in a million, once in a lifetime chance to recoup. Yeah, yeah. I've been working. Tommy, you know I've been working for years now. Ever since Felicity left us. Now, well, whose fault was that, Grimmel? Tom, I didn't come to, to open old wounds. But now there's a chance. Some folks from New York want to buy the house. All right, sell it. How? The house now has a national reputation. So what can I do about it? Something. Don't ask me what, but something. Do you in your heart honestly believe in ghosts? No. Well, why not? Because, it, because it's impossible. Well, how do you account for the fact that people actually hear the ghosts when they're inside that house? You want, you want to know what folks hear in that house. They hear a loose board on the floor or a gap on the mortar of the chimney, a missing tile on the roof. Every house has creaks and moans and strains, and a fellow's imagination takes it from there. And you've got to find them. You've got to find that loose board, that missing mortar, that busted tile, whatever it is. You've got to find it. Give me a chance to live out the rest of my life comfortably. Now, please, Tommy. Well, sir, I went to work in that house. I looked her over from top to bottom. Old Colonel Nathaniel Hargraves, he sure knew how to build. Beams of solid oak, walls of thick and heavy plaster. After all these years, everything was still sound and true. I putted up the window so no air could blow through. I made sure the shutters hung firm and steady. I oiled all the hardware in the doors. And when I was through, a tighter, sounder, more ship-shaped house simply didn't exist. And a coat of paint made it so fresh and clean and bright. And I even put in a telephone. Well, that was for psychological reasons. After all, a practical thing like a phone works against the very idea of a ghost. And... Hello? Tommy. Oh, yes, Dumont. What is it? The prospective buyer. He's in town waiting in his hotel room. Yes, Dumont. Tommy, you, uh, you did take care of the ghost, didn't you? I mean... The house, it's, a, it's no longer haunted. I'll, uh, I'll see you in a little while, Dumont. Oh, bless you, Tommy. And just for that, I'm going to give you your full broker's commission. I looked around the house, that bright place, that cheerful, sunny place. How could anyone possibly believe it was haunted? It proved there's no such thing as a ghost. And then... Then I heard her. Felicity. Felicity. It's me. It's Tommy. Tommy Tattersall. Talk to me. Oh, Felicity, don't you remember? Tommy. Felicity. I searched every room, every closet. I probed through nook and cranny, cell of the attic. But there was nothing, nothing, no one. And then I... I decided to try something else. I stood by the fireplace and very quietly I said, Felicity, it's me. It's Bobby, Felicity. It's your own true love, Bobby Lightfoot. Come back from the war. It's me. Bobby. 
Bobby? Bobby? Cassidy, oh, my good Lord. It's... Oh, it's... It's, it's you. It's Felicity. You, you, you're alive. You're... You're not a ghost. Oh, Bobby. You've come back to me. You've come back. How, how did you... I, I had to stay here, Bobby. You'd never find me if I'd left. Oh, yes, but where did you... Don't you remember the room? The hidden room beside the chimney. We found it when we were children. Where they used to hide the runaway slaves. Remember? But, but, but everyone says it's a haunted house. Haunted? Oh, you know how sounds go in this place. I was crying. I was calling to you, Bobby. How did you live? Live? I didn't have to live, Bobby. I'm dead. Just as you're dead. I'm so happy, Bobby. I mean, I mean food. Oh, how funny how I still need food, even if I'm dead. On a dark night, you know folks around here, no one ever locks a door. All I ever needed was a crust of bread, a swallow of milk. No one ever missed it. Well, Sabina, come on, no, let, me, let no, me take you. You mustn't. You must never... Take me anywhere. Bobby, someone always wants to take the house away from me. Don't let them promise. You'll never let anyone take this house away from me. Never. Promise. I... I promise. And you'll come and you'll visit me every day. <laughs> you can't stay here until we're married. But I'll plan for a big wedding. Oh, yes. It will be a big wedding, the biggest this town ever saw. Yes, Felicity. You won't let anyone ever take this house away from me. You won't. I won't. Yes, Mr. Hastings. I'm sitting in Mr. Tattersall's office right now. We'll be by to pick you up. Why, here's Mr. Tattersall walking in right now. Hang up the phone, Duma. Shouldn't take us more than five I minutes. I said hang told. up the phone. Yes, sir. You just have your checkbook Duma, ready. hang up, will you? We'll see you right away. No, no. You will not see him right away. Do you realize what a deal I just worked out for the house? You'll have to cut it off, Duma. House and property for 350000 What do you mean, call it off? Well, it's all contingent on the house not being haunted, right? Yes, yes, but that's what you weren't there to ascertain, to, to, to prove, to establish beyond the shadow of a doubt. Well, it's haunted, Dumont. It, it, it's, it's what? haunted. Oh, nonsense. There's no such thing Bring as your buyer here. I guarantee he'll hear enough to run screaming out of the premises. No. No, Tommy, I... I can't work anymore. I, I, I just can't. I'm afraid you're going to have to. I've got to sell that house. I, I've got you to. You can't sell a haunted house, Dumont. Oh, no. And the home of Felicity Hargraves is haunted. Felicity died last year. A very, a very old lady. She died in that house she loved. She died in Bobby Lightfoot's arms. And late that night, Bobby buried her in a secret place. Well, now that we have all that ghost story business out of the way... Now, let me show you the finest, the most nicely kept, the best constructed, the most attractive colonial period home in the entire USA. The Hargraves House. Oh, I vouch for each and every beam, board, and brick. And I'll even show you the secret chamber. Well, if our animal-oriented friends will forgive the expression... There are many ways to skin a cat, and just as many ways to sell a house. People who peddle large ticket items like automobiles and houses are known for their enthusiasm and optimism, as indeed they should be. They are also incurably romantic, and in many cases, they tell a story so convincingly, they actually believe it themselves. I'll be back shortly. just heard a ghost story. But 
What is a ghost story? Indeed, what is a ghost? Mr. Ibsen says we are all ghosts. We are what we have inherited from our departed ancestors. We are all sorts of dead ideas and beliefs. Who knows what lies dormant in each of us? Who knows what we keep locked up in the dark of the soul? Our cast included Ian Martin, Marion Seldes, Joan Shea, and Leon Janney. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by CertainTeed Fiberglass Attic Insulation. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.